Good morning from the Port of Brisbane, also known as Fisherman Islands. I've been given permission to explore the Port of Brisbane and I wanted to explore it to learn something about the history of this very interesting and little known part of Brisbane. So before I really get stuck into it, the security division here at Port of Brisbane wanted me to tell you all that this really isn't a, a place for sightseers and tourists. It is private property, but just bear that in mind. They don't really like too many visitors up here. Just the way it is. It, it is um, a place of business. There's a lot of traffic. But anyway, you don't need to come here now because I'm here showing you what's here and looking into the, into the history of the place. What do you think of my Port of Brisbane vest? I've never worn a high-vis vest before. It's rather becoming. I hope it doesn't draw the magpies. Fisherman Islands was named by Matthew Flinders. He's Australia's first circumnavigator and came across some indigenous men who he wasn't sure what they were doing at first, but it turns out they were fishing, so he called it Fisherman Islands. Uh, well, Fisherman Island, and I think that the other islands that were nearby here just got called Fisherman Islands as well. So underneath parts of all this enormous development and container wharves and roads are the original islands. There's a lot of land between the islands filled in with land reclamation. The land reclamation is going on and Fisherman Islands uh, will expand further into Moreton Bay. I tried it. Just up ahead of me is, I think it's called Portside Park. And years and years ago I did visit this place. There used to be a very nice cafe there. Just crossing over this road here. Not a lot of traffic. I thought there would have been a little bit more. But still being very careful because the trucks can hurtle through here. You can hear magpies over there. They know I'm here. There's magpies over there. They look pretty mean. Time for the umbrella, I think. This one's really good, you just press a button. All right, now I can deal with those magpies. It really is quite a lovely park they've got down here. It's not really used at all. I guess some of the, the workers here may stop off here for their lunch break. But the lagoon is huge. Lots of bird life and obviously you've got the, the traffic right there. you got all the trucks, of course. Yeah, shellfish recycling is something I've never heard of before. Doesn't seem to be anyone here at the moment. Got a little set up here, but they've got huge piles of shellfish just waiting to be recycled. I don't know how you recycle shellfish. Tons and tons of used shellfish. This one says, like this is for July, and that's the August piles. I wonder if they crush them down or they put them into those cages over there. They're like gabions. I wonder if they, I don't know, what do they do with them? Oh, and the Port of Brisbane is the largest and busiest port in Queensland, and it's the third busiest port in Australia. It's like a former bus stop. There's no buses coming through here anymore. As you hop on the lawnmower. See, in the past, Brisbane City itself was where the ships would dock. And as bridges were built and ships got bigger and there was more trade and more cargo, the wharves around Brisbane, you know, like down at Eagle Street and all those sort of places, and South Brisbane just couldn't handle the load anymore. So they started moving further downriver. The ports then moved to places like, you know, Belimba and Hamilton. And eventually in 1977, they started construction of the wharves along the river here. I have absolutely no idea what those things are. Looks like modern sculpture. 
seems so strange to be able to walk right in the middle of a very wide road and have absolutely no traffic on it. Better look behind me just in case. Better not push my luck. Just over in that area there, there's a railway line and um, that comes up from I think the Cleveland line, it's freight only and it goes in a very very large loop, I guess they're dropping off cargo somewhere around about there. But that area there where the rail loop currently sits, that was all open water because Fisherman Islands were just that, they were a series of islands and this is all filled in here, so where I'm walking right now was once just open water. I don't know how deep it might have been. Just over that way is the Seafarers Mission. I'm gonna knock on the door and see if they'll let me in. Normally I organize these things ahead of schedule. I, I phone places up that I, this one slipped my mind. I've just been talking to Ross, uh, the guy who, uh, you know, one of the staff here at the Seafarers Mission, and he's given me permission to come inside and have a look. So I've gone back outside to make it look as if I'm coming in. The National Christian Maritime Association. It is faith-based and it operates a free service for seafarers, people working in cargo ships and, and all, the, all the ships that come into port here, to be able to socialise and you know just hang out, a change of scenery. And there's games here as you can see, there's pool tables, they've got movies, they've got um, books, they've got magazines, they've got free Wi-Fi. When you're at sea for weeks or months to be able to sit outside amongst some trees is uh, is a real plus. Anyway, they, they've got, um, there's a, a shop down there and they've got a, a bar as well. I wonder if the bar is open now. Oh wow, how much are they? Uh, I think five dollars. I might grab a Heineken if that's okay. I was so thirsty, Ross, I'm going to get something to drink. Yeah. The lovely chap here has just said, oh yeah, we've got beer. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's beer o'clock now. It is somewhere. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, it's it's right here where I'm standing. <laughs> um, did you want one? No, no you're right, you're on duty. <laughs> yeah. Heineken beer at the Seafarer's Mission at Port of Brisbane. Thank you very much to Ross and the staff here for letting me have a look around and uh, selling me a beer. Just what you need on a hot day of walking around the Port of Brisbane. Apparently there's about 80,000 people arrive by sea here at the Port of Brisbane every year and the Seafarers Mission looks after about 15,000 of them. Cheers to the Seafarers Mission. Have a good day, Ross. Yeah, we'll be rock. See you later. Thanks, Bye-bye. Yeah. Bishop Drive, that way. It's got a very interesting history about it. All right, I'm on Bishop Drive and it's called Bishop Drive because right behind me that way, there used to be Bishop Island. Now, Bishop Island was a man-made island. It was the result of dredging at the mouth of the Brisbane River. And there was so much spoil poured there that an island formed and they called it Bishop Island. Bishop Island was a very popular place for people from Brisbane to uh, visit on weekends in little boats and yachts and things. Uh, there was, um, I think it was a dance hall on there and camping. And later, the uh, Queensland government 
steamer Lucinda, very, very historic vessel. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the draft constitution for federation was finalised on the Lucinda on the Hawkesbury River, west of Sydney in 1891. That ship eventually became a coal barge of all things and was eventually beached on Bishop Island to help create a, a wave break. Of course, I chose this, this moment to shoot this part of the video when there's the most traffic. Anybody else? Later on, as the Port of Brisbane grew and expanded, Bishop Island was subsumed. It was built over by the encroaching wharves here. So where I'm standing right now was the eastern arm of Bishop Island, right here. This is where the island ended. The, the hull of the Lucinda, which was beached on Bishop Island, is still over there. Now, before the Lucinda was decommissioned and turned into a coal barge, the bar and some of the wood panelling from her saloon were transferred to the to Parliament House, Queensland Parliament House up near QUC Gardens Point, and can still be seen there today. And I can see me just over the road, the Island Port Cafe. It's lunchtime and I'm pretty hungry, so I'm gonna try and get across this increasingly busy road to try and get to that cafe. This is not a pedestrian friendly part of Brisbane. So that was lunch, now I'm going to head further north, well I'm going to go as far north as I can, up to near where they're doing more land reclamation. Wait for that truck. Peregrine Drive, that's where I am now. Fisherman Islands is expanding further and further into Moreton Bay. So how much further are they going to keep expanding the Port of Brisbane? Something that I did forget to mention earlier is the indigenous name for Fisherman Islands. And it's And Aka. I don't know how you pronounce it. A-N-D-A-C-C-A-H. Andaka. On we go. Stuff in both eyes now. Looks like I'm coming up towards the end of Fishman Islands as it currently is. The road, it's like a T intersection there and more of the reclamation work is going on just beyond that fence. Well this is it, this is the furthest north you can walk on Fishman Islands at this point in time. The work is continuing though over that way. You can see the, the trucks and cars and equipment and fences to make the island bigger. Just go across the road. See Morton Bay out there. And just in the distance, I can see the Glasshouse Mountains. Danger, port expansion construction site. Unauthorized persons keep out. Well, I'm definitely unauthorized. So from here, I now head south again, but down the other side of Fisherman Islands. Before I was more or less on the western side. Now I'll be on the eastern side. in the middle distance there I can see St Helena Island or St Helena I don't know which way you pronounce it I've been there once before but many years ago in fact long before even YouTube existed I should go out there one day and make a video I thought I was seeing water it's actually blue sand or some sort of blue powder sprinkled on the sand and where I'm standing right now interestingly this here probably round about this spot uh, used to be the shoreline. One of the islands making up Fisherman Islands was from here that way. Everything behind me there was water. But anyway, when they were developing all this, space was set aside um, for a protected conservation area for the wild birds, and they created this... Um, wait for it. This water area here. Now on the other side of the road over there, you can see some mangroves. This is part of one of the islands. This isn't 
land reclamation. Those mangroves over there that you can see, that's been growing there since, well, time immemorial. It's all protected, they're, they're not going to chop it down or build on it, I understand. So right now I'm actually walking on one of the islands, not on something that's been reclaimed from Morton Bay. Just being a little bit naughty now, I've left Lucinda Drive just behind me. Over there is still the original part of the island. And I noticed over here a lot of shells. Shells right on the surface. And they're up high too, I mean we're fairly high up above the, the tidal mark, so I'm just wondering if maybe this is a an old midden, a shell midden. Or it may just be that the earth has been heaped up here by bulldozers and some shells got in the way. I don't know. But there are an awful lot of them here on the surface. I've come full circle now and I'm back at the Port of Brisbane main office. And there's one more place I want to visit while I'm here. And it's right up there. This is the observation deck of the Port of Brisbane office. And it's a terrific view from up here. Take a look at this. Well, there we have it, Fisherman Islands, Port of Brisbane. This was a fascinating walk, a place I knew next to nothing about. Certainly didn't know anything about the history of this place. So I hope you found it as fascinating as I did. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. And if you do like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you again soon.